folks, special guest on this week's edition of the Irish NFL Show. Guy to spend time in front office roles with the Chiefs, the Bears, the court before becoming the general manager of the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, delighted to welcome no, none other than Chris Ballard to the Irish NFL Show. Chris Falcher, welcome. Thank you. Appreciate y'all having me. Chris, uh, great to have you on the show. Have you ever had the uh, pleasure of being in Ireland before? No, I haven't. It, but it's a, it's on the it's on the list. It's just hard. It's hard to get away with what we do right now. Plus, I have five children, um, so and they're all active. So hard to get away. But definitely a place we want to. My wife and I want to visit. Chris, the the internet would have us believe that you grew up a, a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Is that is that accurate? That is accurate. That is very accurate. You know, I, I one think of the few things they're accurate on. But they're uh, accurate that, on that one. Yeah, that that's the thing. You never know whether it's it's true or not. But that can be that can be an Irish connection with the Roonies, I think, in, in fairness. <laughs> but if if we go back, if we take you back to, to your Texas AM Kingsville days, so you, you start out there coaching, um, and, and then obviously you moved into to scouting. Just wondering in terms of moving into the the executive roles then. Do you think that that background assisted you from having a coaching and a scouting background? Oh, I don't, there's no question it's benefited me. And like a lot, like I look, I look back a lot of times, you know, and sometimes wonder how I've you know, gotten to where I've gotten. And, but then it always traced it back to Kingsville where, you know, we had 36 scholarships. On defense, you know, we split them up. Offense got 17, we got 17. So you were working with somewhat of a salary cap at the time because we, because there was no, there was not any players on full scholarship. Um, and then we had to go evaluate because like the standards of that program were really high at that time. I mean, you're talking about a, you know, the legacy and the, and the players that had come from Eugene Upshaw to, Daryl Green to John Randall. I mean, just, you know, three Hall of Famers that had played there and they'd won a lot of games and I hit it at the right point. So, I mean, I think during that from 94 to 2000, when I was, I think we had 17, 18 kids go play in the NFL and, and they, and they weren't just cup of coffee playing in the NFL. They, they had careers from Al Harris who played, you know, I think 14 years, Robert Garza. I think he played 14 years. So. I was fortunate to be around NFL caliber players at a smaller level and been able to coach them and see how they interact and, you know, what made them tick and what made them successful. Um, so, you know, looking back on it, a lot of what we were doing there applies to the job today. Chris, you've um, worked in an array of talent from your times with the Chiefs, the Bears, and obviously with the Colts and every general manager in the league has their own suppose a way of evaluating players what's your mindset and thought process when it comes to player evaluation well I mean like we're we're a big team on you know we're going to take athletic upside and traits and then you know bet on that for our coaches to be able to bring that talent to light but then also mixing in the character component of it, component of it which is so important um, and that doesn't mean they're squeaky clean off the field but what it means is, you know, they have a, a deep care and a and respect for the game and really want to get better, push themselves to be the best they can be. Um, so that eliminates a lot of guys that are really talented off our list, you know, but I always tell like there's the talent determines the ceiling of the player, but the character determines the floor. Jerry Angelo, who is our G, my GM and Chicago and who I owe a great deal to you know I used to preach that all the time and it's it couldn't be more true you know a guy a guy has a lot of talent but doesn't have the the work ethic or the you know the mental toughness to grind through what they have to grind through every day um you know might not ever reach his ceiling you know he might have a high one but he'll never reach it then he'll never reach you know you'll never actually see what he actually is and a guy with character and you combine that with talent, then you usually end up with a pretty good player. You've talked there about the evaluation process, Chris. Uh, what about player development? Obviously, uh, the Colts bringing in a guy mm -hmm. close to home for us, uh, Marcel Dabo through the IPP. 
there's been some great players that have developed with the Colts in the last few years. Yeah, so I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a look. It's a holistic approach from from everybody in the organization that's dealing with football. So, you know, one, they got to be willing to accept what we're we're trying to develop them in. Okay, so they they got to own their development. We tell all our players that you own your development. All right, but then it comes in from coaching uh, to strength to nutrition to recovery. We've got an area dedicated for each, you know, a person and a staff for each area that they're going to develop in. And then, you know, developing as a man, you know, most of the time these are young, you know, even though, you know, we think of them as men, they're still 21, 22, 23 years old when they come in the league and they're not fully developed as men yet. So we kind of take the whole approach that we're developing, you know, everything about him um, to be a professional. And that's probably one of the, that's one of the real satisfying parts of the job um, when you watch a player you know go into year three and four of their careers where they really get it they've really developed um, they're playing at a really good level or a high level um, and going on to their second contract that's a that's a pretty satisfying thing for all of us and Chris maybe to piggyback on that a little bit because after your second year with the Colts you were named NFL executive of the year now look that's a, a personal accolade and, and a great achievement for you obviously for every team winning the Lombardi is going to be the goal but you talk there about the satisfaction that comes from seeing those guys develop just interested in maybe you know some of the the moments or, or, or players that you're particularly proud of or some of the, the favorite stories that, that you might have from from be it from your time as GM or further back? Oh, I can. I mean, they're numerous. I mean, I look at, you know, Nathan Vasher, who's a corner we drafted in the fourth in Chicago and going to the Pro Bowl for us and playing great football. Charles Tillman had an unbelievable career um, in Chicago. I think he's a Hall of Fame player personally. Um, we'll see if it ever happens for him. Um, but, you know, those have been fun you know, to watch and then watch him have success away. You know, Charles, Charles, you know, is now in the FBI. Um, so life after football, this is just a small slice of life for them. You know, we think they're going to make enough money where, you know, they don't have to work again. Well, you know, that's not reality in terms of, you know, you got to have something you're going to be passionate about and get up and do every day. Um, and then, you know, just like I look at Mo Ali Cox on our team, who was a basketball player. and you know, for two, you know, for really a year and a half, he struggled and a light came on and we just stuck with him. Our coaches kept coaching him. They saw he had talent. And he had a, a high want to as a player um, and to watch him develop and then, you know, get into his second contract last year, you know, this off season. That was, that was really satisfying. Chris, over the past number of years, I suppose the Colts have been quite active in free agency, you know, in terms of resourcing a quarterback and even within the draft is have brought in Matty Ryan this this off season. Just in terms of what your expectations were, him coming in. Obviously, he's had a great career in Atlanta, but has he has he been everything you expected and more? Well, he's look. We knew we were getting a a pro that had a sense of urgency to win and was going to do everything in his power to prepare to win. All right, so that's that's what that's all you can ask for. Now we got to get in. You know, we're just second second week of training camp right now. So, you know, we'll write the story as we go along and, and as a team, but we're very happy with what Matt brings from a leadership standpoint and from a performance standpoint. Um, we still got a ways to go. You know, this is still, we're still really early in the process. Like teams get, you know, you can't ever, you know, teams, the teams that win this league get better. They get better as the year goes on. And I think that's what we we will do. We'll continue to get better. Matt, you know, it is a new team for him, um, but uh, it, with his experience and, you know, his knowledge and his work ethic, I don't I don't have many I don't have any doubt that he's going to be successful and and give us a chance to win. Yeah, a lot of people over here excited to see how Matty Ice gets on in Indy at a team building level. Uh, how much of it for you focuses around players? within the division that you have to face for years to come. We look at Trevor Lawrence, Derek Henry, and those teams. Do, do you find yourself focusing your efforts uh, maybe on more key positions, whether it be secondary, defensive line, or from an offensive standpoint, you know, you seem to have, be, have some great players there. We talk about Matt Ryan 
and loads of different players on the offense. Uh, what's your mindset there? Well, I don't know if we've ever adapted to what everybody else is doing. You know, we have a team building philosophy. Like we believe in, you know, you got to be good up front first. Like you can't, if you're not good on the O-line and D-line, it's going to, it's going to be a struggle. Um, and it's hard to win games over the long haul. You can, you can get by for a short term, but over the long haul, when you get start getting into November and December, if you're not good up front, it's going to show up. And so that's where the core belief of us comes from. We're, you know, we spend a lot of assets on both of them. Um, we're obsessed with depth at both of them. And, you know, we feel like we got, you know, two really good units there. And then once, once you build the two front cups, when you really start matching in, you know, the rest of the players that you need. Chris, um, I, I think final final questions from from each of us, but I'm just interested. We're five thousand miles away uh, from Indianapolis here in Dublin. I'm not even a, a Coles fan, but I can see on social media the impact that Yannick Ngakwe is having on Coles Nation. He is, I suppose, kind of gone out of his way to endear himself, and in a, in in a genuine and authentic way to really make himself feel like at home in the community in the city. Could you? Talk to us a little bit about him. We know he's a gifted player, but like, what has he brought to the building? You know, Yannick, he's an interesting guy, and he's a, you know, we're lucky to have him. You know, he's been with, you know, he's in Jacksonville, then he gets traded to Minnesota to a contract, you know, dispute, then ends up going from Minnesota to um, Baltimore, where it just wasn't a real good fit schematically, and then ends up signing and, you know, with the Raiders a year ago and then you know we trade for him so it really it's his fifth team um and that's that's a little bit unusual for a guy with his talent but couldn't be more pleased with how he works and who he is as a as a person and he's got some real special gifts not only athletically but also in what he can give back to the community, which I'm really proud, you know, for him that he's taken that initiative, you know, to give back, Yeah, you know, to, for much is given, you know, much is expected. And he takes that to heart. So it's great. Like the last couple of years, especially like 2020 was hard because of COVID, you know, because they didn't really get to know. It's hard to get to know the players. And then 21, we still had some restrictions. And now having the restrictions off, for like I think last night we had I don't know ten that ten to twelve thousand fans at practice and it was just a really awesome experience and it's great for our guys and our fans to get to know our players because we're proud of them we're proud of who they are and what they stand for and I, and I'm proud of unique proud happy for him that he has really ventured out and wants to make a difference in the community hopefully we we found him a home and he can be here a while. Chris, you, you discussed um, the collaborative approach in terms of team building. Can you just talk about the collaborative approach within the organization from ownership to the general manager, the head coach, and just the unique relationship you have with both parties? Yeah, no, it is unique. You know, we I work for a great owner, um, and he's got a lot of, you know, Mr. Ursa has got a lot of experience doing this. You know, he's been in the, been in the league for, you know, 50-something years, um, and He's done it all from work in the equipment room to being a scout to actually being a GM. And so he understands the daily, you know, bumps that happen. He under, you know, when he's watching games on Sunday, he understands what he's looking at. So that makes our conversations very easy. Now, look, I'm a, like, I don't sugarcoat anything with what I see on game day and he doesn't either, which that makes our relationship really good. And Frank is very similar. Like it, you know, probably the hardest thing for organizations to do is to evaluate internally, you know, cause you'll see all the warts on, on players and then you'll see all the great things too. But making sure you truly get an accurate evaluation of your own team, I think is harder than anything we do. I think it's hard for any business to do. You know, because you can be easily painted um, and get stagnant 
and overvalue or undervalue certain assets that you, certain players that you have. And so we do take a collaborative approach here. Look, ultimately, it, you know, Frank and I and Mr. Ursay are going to make the final decisions. But what I don't want to have with our, with anybody that works for us, like I, like one of the big things is they tell me what you think. Don't sugarcoat it. I don't want to, I, if, if we're all thinking alike, then nobody's thinking. And I'm not smart enough to just come up with all the answers for everything, every problem that we face in a season and during an off season. So I've got a very talented group, um, you know, of, of scouts around me, uh, football operations. You know, I'm very fortunate right now. And I, and I think the same way on our coaching staff. And we don't always agree. And that's a good thing, you know, and, you know, they'll battle me, but ultimately, you know, we'll, we'll make the final decision, but I want everybody to know that I need to hear what they think. Just finally, Chris, to round off, it would be amiss of me not to ask this question. You can imagine there's a lot of Colts fans uh, across the pond, Ireland, Europe. Uh, you know, you could have, you could have maybe put, 10 to 15 times the population in Lucas Oil Stadium for the queue to buy tickets in Germany last month. Um, it's been a while since the Colts have come over the pond. Uh, how open are you to that? And do you think it could be a possibility either in the UK or Germany or even Mexico, for example, in the next one? Well, I'm hoping we come y'all's way. We, uh, I actually thought it would happen this year. I have no control over it. And neither does the organization, the league. You know, they do all the scheduling. But I'd be surprised if next year we weren't, you know, coming coming your way. Chris, we just want to thank you for taking the time to chat to us. It means a lot to, to fans on this little green island, island to hear from a, a GM. And I think they will be very happy to hear that the Coles are certainly open to, to coming this direction in the not too distant future. Want to wish you, the team and the entire organization all the best for the upcoming season. And hopefully, maybe we'll see you on this side of the pond in a few years. That would be awesome. That'd be awesome. And anything y'all ever need, don't ever hesitate. I appreciate y'all having me on.